Okay, I don't get it. Show me an example. Okay, let's do this. Okay, so a venture capital firm called Sequoia is going to invest. They're going to lead the Series A, okay? Um, now, you, the entrepreneur, own 10% of the company at a valuation of a million dollars, right? So basically that means that you own $100,000 worth, right? Or 100,000 shares. Let's assume there's 100,000 shares. Okay, so now Kleiner Perkins, another amazing venture capital firm, comes in and they do the Series B at a 100% premium valuation, $2 million valuation. And so new shares are created so that, you know, you can give the shares to Kleiner Perkins. Uh, and Sequoia is not selling their shares, nor should they. You know, it's not fair. Um, so all of a sudden you, the, inve or the, the entrepreneur, you used to own 10% of your company. Now you own less than that. You got diluted because you had to bring in a new investor. Right. I know it doesn't seem fair, does it? Right. Um, so a lot of shares were created for Kleiner Perkins. Right. So um, anyway, the, uh, the, the value of 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 uh, of your stake in the company goes up a lot, but you're not 100 percent richer. Right. Even though the valuation of the most recent round was two million versus one million in, in, in the first round. In fact, you own, you know, about seven percent of the company. Don't worry about the numbers. Don't don't think overthink it. We're going to do a much better example later. OK. Um, you're not that mad because you're worth more now. Um, you're, you're now worth uh, 133 grand, but you think you should be worth 200 grand because it was a two bagger, but you're not because you got diluted, right? And, and I know it sucks, uh, but it's, um, and, and you feel like you should still own 10%, but you, you got to actually sell part of the company, right? And so you're going to get diluted big time between when you found a company and when it goes public. And most founders own less than 20% of the company by the time it goes public because they've given away a lot of the company in order to finance growth over the ABCD round or whatever it is before they IPO. And so you've got legal protections. Uh, and so did the venture capital firm. So Sequoia's got legal protections too, right? So they can do pro rata. They can invest more money so they don't get diluted, right? So let's say you own 10% of a company, right? And, and the company does... Um, uh, another investment round at at 100% premium. You still want to own 10% of the company, right? And so what you can do is you can put in a little bit more money to make sure that you still own 10% of the company if if you want. Yeah, you don't have to, right? So uh, in this hypothetical example, Sequoia uh, invested 67 grand uh, to offset dilution. Don't worry about the numbers. It is complicated. We're going to do a much easier example later on, I promise you. But the bottom line here, this is, this is why uh, VC firms usually invest close to 80% of a fund and they leave 20% left over so that they can invest more money so they don't get diluted in the good deals. Not all deals, but the good deals. And that's called a capital call. The VC firm will then call their investors and say, hey, I'm calling for capital. Uh, and then you'll contribute more of your investment. Um, anyway, I know it sounds a little bit esoteric and complicated. Don't worry about it at all because we're going to cover a much easier example later on. Okay, I just wanted to kind of introduce the concept to you early on. Convertible debt. What is this stuff, convertible debt? I've heard people mention this term and it bores me to tears. All right, so this is a, a debt instrument. Uh, and so um, it actually has a senior claim to common and preferred shares. Um, and what happens is if the firm that gets the convertible note, right? So the, the startup, if they can't pay the debt back, right? Uh, then what happens is it can convert into stock, right? For your, your investor. Um, and, and, and there's a, a little tax incentive for that as well. I'm not going to go into too much detail on that. Um, and usually what happens is say you're a startup and you just did your A round with Sequoia. You want to do the B round in two years. But unfortunately, six months before that two-year mark is up, you're, out, you're, you're SOL. You're in big trouble because you need money. And so you're not ready to do the B round yet. And so you might be able to call up a bank like Silicon Valley Bank uh, and do a convert or approach a high net worth investor and say, listen, I'm going to do another round in six months from now. Um, why don't you invest with me now? Uh, it'll be like a loan. I'll give you 8% interest per year. And then when I do that next round, your loan will convert into ownership in the next round at a 20% discount. Okay. So you'll get that 20% bump up there. Okay. So anyway, that, that's how it works. Let's talk quickly about warrants. Um, 
so uh, a startup can uh, incentivize some investors um, by giving them warrants, which is basically the options to get shares later for free. Okay, uh, it, it's kind of like stock options. Uh, and um, what, what happens is um, uh, a lot of service providers like legal firms you deal with, um, you, you can pay them with cash for their legal fees, which are really high usually. And you can also give them warrants or the option to you know, get shares later on. And of course, options, uh, we covered why uh, people grant options. It's basically to keep your employees staying at your firm. It's like we'll call it golden handcuffs so they can't leave, right? And options are basically uh, an opportunity for employees to not just get cash for salary, but to get stock as well, or, or the option to buy stocks at a certain very low price in the future. Okay, so class recap. We talked about the history of venture capital uh, it's very important to understand uh, where innovation lives in the world and what the perfect ecosystem is for it. Uh, and we, uh, we talked about venture capital due diligence. Uh, we talked about term sheets very quickly or just legal stuff. We talked about security structures. Uh, we talked about um, the importance of, of, of getting lawyers and, and really understand uh, the security you're getting involved with.